guys, how's everybody doing today? It is February the 14th, 2024. It is Valentine's Day, and we've got a pretty good video for you guys today. Um, so I get a lot of questions in the comments, uh, you know, people that are trying to decipher or not if they have, uh, you know, an issue with liver disease or anything like that, and they're wondering if, um, if they, in fact, have something going on, you know, they drank for a period of time and are wondering uh you know are any of these symptoms that i'm having do they have anything to do with you know with my drinking and um i figured that today <clears throat> i think I've, I've talked about this in the past before but like i've said there are so many new subscribers to this channel um i can't remember every single video that i've done I, I i went through and and kind of glanced through the videos that i did this morning to see if i talked about this before and i think i have but I, it's not titled in this manner um i know i've touched on some of this stuff but i just wanted to make a video today and just talk about the things that i noticed uh that were going on with me before i got sick uh i get a lot of questions in the comments you know people ask me did you notice anything before uh you found out that you had cirrhosis did you have any uh symptoms going on before that happened and i did um i just turned a blind eye to them and pretended like they weren't going on i knew that i wasn't feeling well um, but you know, and there, and there were some issues, but I just didn't take the time for one. I never was the type of person that ever went on Google and Googled anything to, as far as like medical related. Um, I just never have done that. Uh, i I know people that do and people that I know, and I'm not going to say who they are. There's, there's some people that are very close to me that do these things, but when they do that, I mean, if you search on the internet, I, if, just say for instance you type in I've got a headache I mean it can take you down a rabbit hole uh, just doing some Google searching um, so I was always too afraid to ever do that not to mention I just didn't want to know um, I didn't want to have to stop drinking uh, and I didn't want to have to take a hard look at uh, what was going on with myself and the amount of drinking that I was doing um, so, like I said, today I'm going to make a video and just talk about the things that I noticed, the symptoms that I had before I got sick. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, I've looked now, since I've been sick, I've looked at to see what symptoms are that come along with cirrhosis or liver disease and things of that nature or pancreatitis. Um, and some of these things I haven't seen anywhere. Uh, some of them I have. Um, but I'm just going to go through the list. Um, I did want to talk about really quick, um, I was watching, uh, this morning, I was watching, um, a podcast, um, I'm not going to say which one it is, but I was watching a podcast, and, uh, there was a gentleman on there, um, that's a rock star, and he was talking about how, uh, he used to drink and use drugs, and he has since stopped doing so, <laughs> But he was talking about how when he would drink and use drugs that he had an alter ego. And man, that really struck home with me. Um, as soon as he said that, I was like, man, I, that's exactly what I did. Uh, I, I, I There was this person that uh, I guess maybe I wanted to be or who I thought that I was or... I, I think more or less who I, who I wanted to be. Like I've said before, I've always been a kind of quiet person. I've never really been a really loud, obnoxious person, only when I drank. And um, I think that uh, I was kind of living in that, that, that mentality of like this alter ego that I had, this other person that I was trying to portray, and the alcohol allowed me to do that. Um, I want to make a video on that and talk about that. And talk about who my alter ego was, uh, the person I became when I drank. And I think I'm going to talk about that in tomorrow's video. I've touched on it before in the past a little bit, but I've never really taken a deep dive into that and how much my personality really did change when I drank. I was a completely different person when I did so. I mean, it, uh, night and day difference. I mean, it was literally like I was putting on a mask uh, when I would drink alcohol. Uh, it was like I was putting on a costume. And I became a totally different person. But I, I think I'm going to make a video about that tomorrow and just kind of talk about how different I was when I drank and how different my personality was and just how I carried myself when I drank. Uh, so be on the lookout for that tomorrow. I'm going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to write down some notes tonight and really, really think hard about 
who I was when I was a drinker. Um, so be on the lookout for that tomorrow. But like I said, today I want to talk about the things that I noticed before I ended up in the hospital and was really ill. Um, the first thing that I noticed, uh, well this isn't the first thing, but the first thing I got on my list that, that I did notice that was going on, I've talked about this before, is that my blood pressure was always really, really high. Um, I could feel my blood pressure was high. Uh, I would get these really bad headaches, my face would get flushed. Um, I just, you get this like pressure behind your eyes. Uh, I could hear my heart beating in my ears. Um, I just, and every time I went to the doctor, they would take my blood pressure and my blood pressure would be through the roof. Now, I don't remember what the numbers were. I never, I just don't remember back then what it was, but I just know that it was super high and they had told me numerous times, um, that I need to go to the emergency room because my blood pressure would be so high. And did I ever go? No, of course not. I just went home. Um, and then I would tell myself, it's probably from the drinking. I'm just not going to drink tomorrow. And of course, you know how that turned out for me because I never did until I got sick. Um, another thing that I noticed too was uh, I, I was always nauseous um, and I still deal with nausea still to this day. Um, I don't vomit like I did back then, but I used to throw up every single day. Uh, I would wake up every day in the morning and throw up and, and, and I would throw up during the day sometimes as well. And one of the times that I really would get sick is, um, you know, I've talked about this too, is that I would get up in the morning and drink. And I know a lot of us especially when we get that that deep into alcoholism you know we like to use the hair of the dog to feel better um there would be mornings where i would try to drink and i just could not get it down i would throw it right back up uh the smell of the alcohol as soon as i tasted it, it would, i would get this automatic gag reflex uh as soon as i started to drink um i know i've talked about this before but uh there's another gentleman on YouTube, and I'm not going to say his name, but he does these, like, reenactment videos, and, um, you know, not to say anything about bad about the guy or anything like that. All I'm saying is that he does he does these reenactment videos, and he, he'll do these little shorts of him, like, trying to take a drink in the morning. Man, that just hit home so hard for me when he does that, because that was me. I mean, really trying to, like, you know, take a drink and then just gagging as I did so. Um, that was just every single day. Uh, and like I said, throwing up, I would throw up all the time. Now, I never threw up blood until, uh, until I ended up in the hospital. You know, a couple days prior before I ended up in the hospital, I was throwing up blood. Um, and it didn't actually even look like blood. Uh, I, what I thought was going on was, well, what I told myself in my alcoholic mind, you know, we always make excuses for everything. And, well, at least I know I did. But I told myself, because I had been really sick. I remember the day that I woke up. I woke up that morning, threw up, and uh, tried to eat something to try to settle my stomach down. Couldn't do it, so I was laying in the bed drinking ginger ale and um, and uh, was drinking like Gatorade and stuff like that. And at one point, I tried to drink like a Pepsi or a Coke or something to see if that would help settle my stomach. And after that had happened, that's when I started up throwing up this black stuff. It looked like coffee grinds. And I didn't realize until way later on, that was actually blood. Uh, and that was old blood that I had been vomiting up. And I threw up that black stuff for days on end. I think I, I think it ended up being like three or four days that I was throwing up that black stuff. But that was, it looked like, like, like I said, like coffee grinds. But I thought that that was like Pepsi. Well, that's what, like I said, that's what I told myself it was. That it was the Coke or the Pepsi that I drank. And that's where that color was coming from. But it didn't make sense after a couple days because... I hadn't eaten anything, and I'm still throwing stuff up, and it's black. Um, another thing that I would deal with as well uh, were red blotches on the skin. And I know I talked about that in the video I did about um, about cirrhosis. But uh, I, I, like I said before, I've got these spots right here on my face uh, that, that they still have yet to go away. Even though I've been drinking almost two years now, I still have these spots on my face, on my nose. I've got the red blotches. Um, I've got them all over my face really um, but I started noticing that and then another thing I started noticing too is my eyes would always be red and I was also getting uh, burst blood vessels in my eyes um, I used to check my eyes like every single morning almost I would do this number and I would look in the mirror and see if I had any yellowing of the um, of the whites of my eyes and I would tell myself oh there's no jaundice I'm okay well <laughs> I was so wrong about that uh, which I found out later on, you know, I was just fooling myself, but, 
um, like I said, I started noticing that I was getting these burst blood vessels, and they would like, I, they would like turn like the whole side, like if like the white of my eye would be on the side right here, like it would burst and like fill the whole side of my eye up with like blood. It would get so red. I think that was coming from me throwing up so much. I was bursting the blood vessels from that, but that was just another thing that I was starting to notice. Um, I had no appetite ever. Uh, like I said, I was always nauseous and not to mention I didn't want to eat anything because uh, When you've got a full belly of food, um, it's so hard to get drunk uh, So I would just go, you know all day long without eating anything and I was just actually just talking with somebody just a little bit ago um, I was talking with one of the subscribers as a matter of fact and uh, I was telling them that um, you know I used to uh, would go all day long without eating anything and then in the middle of the night um, I would uh, sleepwalk into the kitchen and this used to happen like almost every single day uh, I would get up in the middle of the night sleepwalk into the kitchen and then I would go in there and eat a bunch of food and I would leave it laying all over the counter I had no idea what I was doing I do not remember this at all I don't remember ever walking into the kitchen eating anything my wife the next morning would come in there and wake me up and be like you left a huge mess in the kitchen and I'm like what are you talking about I never even went in there and there would be I would get like leftovers out and they'd be sitting on the counter um I don't know if I, it, it, you know why I was doing that I guess because I was just so hungry because I hadn't eaten all day uh but I was doing that all the time I was sleep eating um haven't done that since uh since I quit drinking but I used to do that all the time when I drank I did that for years as a matter of fact for a very very long time um uh high and low blood sugar all the time and now that i know uh you know since i've been diagnosed with diabetes it's been almost two years now um and now that i have you know i wear a blood glucose monitor all the time and i know i look at my phone it's it goes to my phone i get alerts if my blood sugar gets too low i get an alert if it gets too high i get an alert that my phone will start beeping um I know the feeling now of uh, what high blood sugar and what low blood sugar feels like and I was getting like really bad dips all the time and I know that was from my alcohol consumption. Um, from what I understand too, alcohol can actually lower your blood sugar. Uh, there were days when I just my blood sugar was so low, I would be really really shaky, I just didn't feel well, I felt like I was going to pass out. Um, Another thing, I didn't even write this down, I just thought about this, but I would see these like blotches all the time. I don't know what that was about, I have no idea. I haven't noticed it since um, since I quit drinking. I haven't had it happen at all. But if I would look up into the sky, um, I would see these like, like, like sparkles of light and like black dots in the sky. And another thing that I noticed too, um, and I haven't seen this in quite some time, but I would see, and I don't think this has anything to do with alcohol, but it could, but I would see these like weird, like, um, it almost looked like strings, like a piece of string that was kind of like falling from the sky. And I would see them like doing this number, uh, in my vision and it wasn't actually really there, but I would see these like little things kind of like falling from the sky and they would do this little number. Um, have no idea what that was. I think that probably was due to my high blood pressure, but I'm not exactly sure. But like I said, I would see like white blotches, I would see black blotches, and then I would see these like little, um, I guess they're called like floaters or something like that, but I would see those all the time. I don't have that problem anymore. I don't know what that was all about. Um, I talked about the shaking and trembling hands. Uh, every morning when I would wake up, my hands would be shaking. Uh, I would be shaking. Um, and then when my blood sugar would get real low, I'd get really shaky. And that used to happen to me all the time. And now that I know that that's exactly what it was, I'm so lucky to even still be here. My blood sugar was getting so low back in those days. And I had no idea what was going on. Um, I just knew I didn't feel good. And I thought that it was because I was just hung over. But now that I know what high and low blood sugar feel like, I know that's what was going on with me. Um, I was always hot always hot it didn't matter what was going on i was the type of guy plus not to mention i was 100 pounds heavier than i am now actually more than 100 pounds heavier uh but i was constantly hot i was always sweating um and i could smell the alcohol just coming out of me uh when i would sweat uh, but i always wore shorts always wore shorts and flip-flops even in the middle of the winter time because i was just burning hot all the time now i'm always cold um, and I'm sure that has to do with a lot of my health issues and stuff, but I'm always cold now. 
Um, especially I'm a lot less heavy than I was back then, so I don't have as much insulation on me. But um, like I said, I was just always hot. I was always sweaty. Uh, my clothes were always soaked with sweat because I was just always hot. And um, I, I know that has something to do with the alcohol consumption. Um, another thing I would get too is I would get these really weird gross of skin on me. And I know I've talked about this, about the skin tags. Um, I would get skin tags all over my chest. I'd get them on my neck. I'd get them on my face. Um, and then I would get these really weird places on my hands. And I don't think that you can see that stuff anymore. I think it's pretty much all gone. But I would get these, and the light's not really helping me here. But I would get these like really weird like groves of skin on my fingers. Especially right in, on this finger. And all these fingers right here I would get. And there's just a little bit of like scar tissue here from it still. But all these fingers, and I had a doctor look at it one day, and she told me it was because of high blood sugar that I was getting this uh, weird gross of skin all over my hands. But they had been there uh, up until I'd gotten sick. And um, then after I'd gotten sick and went and saw a doctor, and then I finally talked with her about the spots on my hands. She said that was from having high blood sugar for so long, um, which is another thing. I was diabetic, had no idea. Um, lack of energy um i still suffer from that uh and that has to do with you know your liver can't um can't uh process the blood correctly can't circulate the blood well filter the blood correctly it can't get the nutrients uh the way that it should um uh, there's a lot of things that have to do with the liver and your energy um but ever since i've uh, uh even before i even got really sick i started noticing um, I would just get really winded all the time. I was having shortness of breath all the time. Uh, even like the smallest tasks sometimes, I would just find myself like really short of breath and just like really winded. Uh, didn't know what was going on. Um, like I used to smoke back then. Um, I thought maybe it was because I was just smoking a lot and that's why that was happening. But now uh, I still feel the same way. And I know that was because I was having liver issues. Um, which uh, would lead me into the next thing. Um, um, I get this question a lot. People ask me, did I have pain in my liver? And I did. Um, I would get pain in my pancreas as well. And I would get the pain. I'm just going to stand up. But like right here is my rib bone. It would be right underneath my rib bone. Up inside there is where that pain would come in my pancreas. This is my left side. It's going to be backwards on the video. And then over here in my liver, I would get pains over there all the time. And it would be this like really dull pain that I would just get like you could like it's, it's really hard to describe but I could just like feel that my liver was there and that it was like swollen um and I could like push and especially if I laid down in the bed um if any of you guys have ever done this before which I'm gonna talk about one more thing that I noticed too but when I would lay in the bed I could um you know your stomach kind of will like like because you, your abs are kind of tight when you're standing up, but when you lay down, that kind of loosens. I could push down, and I could feel how hard my liver was and how much it protruded in my stomach. Um, I never could feel my pancreas uh, at all, but one thing that I did notice, and this is the, um, I noticed this before I got sick and ended up in the hospital in Columbia. So I'd gotten sick in May of 2022 and um, went May... Uh, well, June, July, August, and then at the end of September, um, I ended up getting pancreatitis again and up in the hospital for another two weeks. And that's the time that I almost lost my life, like really, really, really got sick. And I went septic and all that. But right before I ended up in the hospital, um, I was laying in the bed one night and I started having these like really bad pains in my left hand side, but it was like down lower. And um, I was laying in the bed one night and I felt, uh, I kind of like pushed down on my stomach because I started, I was just having this really bad pain right there. And I felt, and I kind of pushed down and I felt this lump inside of there. And it was like big, like the size of my fist and I could feel it. I never said anything to my wife. It scared me really bad. I didn't know what to do. And then like maybe like a couple days later is when I ended up in the hospital again. But come to find out my spleen was enlarged. Um, massively enlarged. I had blood clots in the spleen vein and in the spleen as well. And my spleen was just really big and I had no idea that's what it was. And I don't, it's not there anymore. Um, part of my spleen has been, uh, has been, um, the blood supply has been cut off to part of it. So half of my spleen is not alive anymore, but I don't feel that there anymore. But that's just one of those weird things that I noticed. Um, 
when you end up with like uh, you know liver disease and stuff, it can really pl play a role with your spleen and all that stuff, your splenic vein and your portal vein and all that kind of works together and it can cause all kinds of issues. Um, it's having a lot of brain fog too. Um, just couldn't remember things like I would. I've always been pretty sharp. Uh, never really had that like just kind of just loss of uh, of thought. Like uh, I would I would think to myself, okay, I need to go do this next, and then I would just completely forget what I was doing. Um, I would have to like stand there for you know a few minutes and like really think hard about what I was about to do, and it wasn't like. This happened every once in a while. It was happening to me all the time. I would forget what was happening. I would forget in uh, mid conversation I would be having with people. I would forget what I was talking about, and I, it, I was constantly going, "What was I talking about again?" I'd have to do that over and over again. People would have to go, "Oh, you were talking about this," and then I would still take me a minute to like remember where I was at in the conversation. Stuff like that was happening to me all the time, um, which I'm sure had to do with. Uh, you know, with, with the liver and uh, the ammonia levels that were going on with me. Um, I'm sure that that was what was going on with that. And I still, even after I got sick, um, I was still dealing with that. Uh, up until spring of last year, I was still dealing with a lot of brain fog. Um, dizziness. Uh, I had a lot of dizziness. And um, another thing I noticed too, and I can't remember the term, but uh, it's whenever you like lose your feeling of balance. Um, gosh, I can't remember the name of that, but I was getting that all the time. I remember this one time I was at this gentleman's house and um, he had a barn uh, that was in the back of his property. He owned a farm and on the back of the property he had a barn and I wasn't aware of it, but the barn was originally uh, built uh, as a place for the pigs. They, it, they used to raise pigs on this farm and the, the, the barn actually had a tilt to the floor and that was so that whenever the pigs would use the bathroom, they could just spray the floor and it would all rinse back down off of that. But I remember being at his house one day and I was extremely hungover that morning and I remember standing there trying to talk to him and I didn't realize the floor had a lean to it. I thought it was just me. Oh, it's called vertigo is what it is that I was trying to get the word. But I was standing there talking with him, and I just fell over. I had just completely lost my balance. I couldn't stand up straight. Um, and I started noticing that was happening to me all the time. Um, I would get real dizzy, and I would just have this, like, wobbly feeling. Um, I would have to, like, brace myself up against a wall a bunch of times. Um, it's really scared me really bad. And I would get that feeling a lot, too. It's one of the reasons I had uh, a fear of driving, because I would get that really dizzy strange feeling um sometimes when i'd be driving and i would feel like i was about to like pass out and it would scare me i have to pull over on the side of the road because i didn't want to just crash into somebody um sometimes i would see those like stars going on and um i would get real lightheaded and i'd have to pull over on the side of the road i don't know exactly what that uh came with i don't know if it's because of the high blood pressure or my blood sugar was was was, was out of whack or what um, but that it, it had something to do with the drinking because I ever since I stopped I, I haven't dealt with that um, I've talked about having a hard time even getting the booze down uh, it would even go into the afternoon sometimes I would just feel so bad uh, the nausea would be be so bad and I wanted nothing else but to just to be able to get the couple drinks down so I could just feel better and um, it, I there were so many times I just tried so hard and could not drink because uh, I just felt so horrible. Um, another thing that I had too was just stomach pains, stomach aches all the time. I've suffered from stomach problems my whole entire life, um, but when I um, when I started drinking, it just got really really bad, uh, and I didn't know you know if it had to do with the alcohol. Or what or feels you know from you know I was dealing with something from when I was a kid um, but now I know it was because my liver and my pancreas and all that and I was having a lot of pains in my pancreas all the time uh, especially if I drank a lot of really sugary alcohol drinks the night before that's when I would get those really bad pains in my pancreas there was a period of time where I'd gotten on these like strawberry margaritas um, I got on this big kick and I would make them all the time um, I would 
buy uh, strawberries and I'd freeze them and uh, I would make a simple syrup and uh, I would make these homemade strawberry, frozen strawberry daiquiri things or margaritas. I don't even know what you'd even call them because um, I would put anything. I'd put rum in them sometimes, i put tequila in them sometimes, i put vodka in them sometimes. But I had got to a point where I was drinking those all the time and it really masked the flavor of the alcohol. And uh, anytime I would drink that, the next day I would wake up and I would get those really bad pains in my pancreas. And I, I'm sure that had to do with the amount of sugar I was drinking. It was just putting my pancreas in a straight overload every time I was doing that. Um, and I still suffer from stomach aches a lot, all the time. Um, and that just comes with it. Uh, I've talked about the pain in the liver and I've talked about pain in the pancreas as well. Um, and then the last thing uh, that I did notice um, that I was dealing with uh, right towards the end is uh, about six months before I got sick, I really started losing a bunch of weight. And I'd always heard, uh, you know, that diabetics, one of the, you know, first telltale signs that you have diabetes is you start losing weight unexpectedly. I didn't do anything different. I hadn't changed anything I was doing. I was still drinking. Um, I didn't eat much. I never really did, but I just started losing all this weight out of nowhere. And I remember telling my wife, I said, something's going on. My wife had noticed I was losing weight as well. Um, I had to go buy some new clothes because my pants had gotten so big. And um, I told her, I said, I'm really beginning to wonder if I don't have diabetes. My wife told me, we well, probably need to go to the doctor then. And of course, I blew it off and didn't go and um, finally went. You know, when I got sick and then got diagnosed with everything. And another thing I was dealing with as well, um, and I, I think I've talked about this in the past, but uh, I had been dealing with gout for years. Um, it probably five, six years beforehand when I first got diagnosed with gout. And I kept getting gout over and over and over again. It would happen to me probably every other month I would get a gout flare up. And they would... When I would get a gout flare up, <clears throat> I hated going to the doctor and I really didn't want to go. Um, and I knew what I needed to take in order to make the gout go away. They would put me on uh, on steroidal medications. Um, I think it was methoprednisone is that what they would put me on. And they would give me these little packs and there would be like, you take seven pills the first day and then you kind of like, it, the next day it's six pills and the next day it's five pills. You get this little like uh, blister pack of pills. So I would take those. But I didn't want to go to the doctor because I didn't want them to tell me, hey, man, you probably need to stop drinking or whatever. So I had tried all these different like over, you know, over the counter remedies and, you know, stuff like that. Now, I will tell you one thing that did work for me um, uh, that I had taken in the past. I haven't dealt with gout except for maybe once or twice since uh, I quit drinking. Um, but they sell these uh, tart cherry extract um pills that you can take and you can also buy tart cherry juice i wouldn't recommend that because it's got a ton of uh, sugar in it but um they do make the extract pills that you can take those actually really do work uh to help with the gout if you're suffering from that um because gout is super duper painful um i didn't know what it was at first uh, i thought i'd actually broken my foot because it hurt so bad and then i went and had x-rays done and all that stuff and they did a, they um did some blood work on me and they came back and said you have gout and um excuse me they had checked my uric acid levels and that's how they found out that i had gout um but they had told me you need to come back and do uh your blood work again do a fasting uh blood glucose test um because he told me that uh gout is often associated with diabetes and uh, we actually talked about my drinking that day. I know the doctor. Uh, I've known him for years. Um, we had a pretty nice conversation. And we got to talking about drinking. And he asked me if I drank. And I was pretty honest with him. Um, I don't think uh, that he quite understood the severity of how bad it was. Um, I probably didn't give him all the details. But I did tell him that I drank a lot. And um, he really wanted me to come back and uh, have a conversation and, and um, do that fasting blood, blood test. And I never did. And if I had done that, I probably wouldn't be talking with you guys right now. Because who knows, I probably would have discovered it a long time ago. But I didn't. And here I am now. Um, and, uh, you know, I make these videos every single day and talk with you guys about this stuff. 
But anyway, <clears throat> I just wanted to, to, to name off a list of some things that I noticed, some symptoms I was having before I noticed, uh, well, before I ended up in the hospital. Some things that I was starting to notice, some problems I was having. Um, if you guys are experiencing any of these problems on the list, please go talk with a doctor and get checked out. I know it's scary, and it's not something that anybody wants to go do. It's like taking your, your car into the mechanic. You know, you take your car in to get an oil change, and what always happens? You walk up to the counter, to you're in there waiting in the waiting room as they're changing the oil. You know, you go in there, and they're like, do you want to wait? Yeah, sure, I'm going to wait. 30 minutes for an oil change. You're hanging out. The next thing you know, it's, uh, you know, Mr. Smith, I'm going to need you to walk up here for a minute. And you're like, here we go. You go up there. What do they tell you? Oh, your alternator's bad. You need a new battery. We need to put windshield wipers on the car. You need new brakes. Uh, you got a tire that's about to go out. You know, next, you just went in there for an oil change and then you walk out of there with a $1,500 bill. And I know that's how we always portray going to the doctor. You know, we're scared we're going to go in there and they're going to find a bunch of other things wrong. And that might happen. But I can't suggest anything more than if you are feeling any kind of uh, thing like this, if you're dealing with any of this kind of stuff, please go see a doctor and get checked out. I know it's not comfortable, and I know it's not something that we want to go do, but at the end of the day, you could save yourself a heck of a lot of heartache if you catch some of these things before they become a huge problem. Um, so, if you are dealing with this, please go see a doctor and get it checked out. Uh, I can't, I really can't suggest anything more than just going and seeing a doctor. And, uh, you know, I know some people out there don't believe in the doctors, whatever. You do whatever you'd like to do. I mean, it's your body, your life. Uh, but I really would suggest that you go get it checked out. And if they find something wrong, you probably can get it addressed. And um, you'll at least have that peace of mind of knowing, okay, I, I did have this going on. I've addressed the situation. I've stopped drinking. And now I can move forward with my life. But anyway, with that, with that said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. I really wasn't even trying to make a video this long today, but it ended up being 30 minutes. But um, be on the lookout for that video I'm going to do tomorrow. Like I said, I want to talk about my alter ego, who I was, who I turned into when I drank. And um, I don't know. That's it. So, guys, I'm going to get off of here. I hope you all had a great day today, and I hope you have a great evening and a great night tonight. And until tomorrow's video, I'll see you guys then. Y'all have a great day. Bye. -bye.